Hello there, Shane here doing another online Go lecture about the opening this time. Uh, this is geared towards single digit cues, but also applicable for double digit cues. I'm going to just flip through the first few games of a one cue opening that I saw online, two different games, and I'm going to talk about different points in it and get to a key moment in the opening where one player made a mistake. So let's start. Okay, we have a diagonal game, which can produce interesting results. We have a 3-4 and a 4-4 on the left side, and on the right side we have two 3-4s. Now, I always tell my students that the symmetrical points are less urgent to approach because there's approaches on both sides of the stones. Whereas, because the R16 and the R4 stone are asymmetrical. There are three lines from the right side and four lines from the top side. They're more open in one direction than the other. So therefore, we should either approach our opponent, like so, or we can enclose our own corner. So black chose to enclose his own corner, which is a, a theoretically solid move. Um, this move is fine. You could also go with the low move. In a certain way, you could also go with the large knight's move. It's a little bit a matter of preference. They're slightly different. Especially in the single digit Q realm, we shouldn't nitpick it too much at this point. So white also chose an enclosure. Now this is very important. An enclosure can be imagined as a wall. So we almost imagine this as a black wall. And the black wall is pointed towards the right side of the board. If we add a stone on the right side of the board, we can make boxy territory. If we add stones on the top side, we call this tray territory. It looks like a food tray versus a food box. So this is a kind of a Japanese metaphor. The bento box, box shape, can create better territory than the tray shape. So the first direction of extending after we have an enclosure is towards the boxy side. So that's what black does. Now it's particularly good here because white is also facing the boxy side. When it's white's move back here, a lot of Q players might also decide, okay, I don't want my opponent to get that boxy extension. I'm going to take the R10 stone. But I would warn against that because if you do that, your opponent gets an approach. And in this way, black has a corner enclosure, has a corner stone that's untouched, and gets the first approach. And we're a little bit worried that white's position is too flat. So rather than being pushed down flat, it is better, as white did, to make the enclosure. So black makes his extension, and white gets to approach the left side first. So white chooses this high approach, which is a common way of approaching the 3-4 stone. Um, there are other ways that white could approach in this way these are patterns that you could see but no problem here and makes a nice extension that balances out a five space extension from the 4-4 four four and a low extension to balance with the high approach at d6 Black plays to make a double wing extension. We call this a double wing, and it makes a perfect framework off of an enclosure. Presumably, Black could have made a more active approach and gone for a double wing with an approach, but maybe Black didn't want to avoid some type of complication with what if White decides to disrupt those plans and form some sort of 
pincer. I wouldn't be afraid of a pincer here, but maybe Black was just thinking that he would calmly have the double wing without the complications of a pincer. So now White, since he wasn't approached, decides to make a solid approach, I mean enclosure to avoid the approach, a G17. And now it's Black's move. Um, this jump here is very brilliant. It prevents um, that double wing side that's a tray kind of becomes more boxy now, so it's much more developable. And um, Black is thinking about eventually, when the time is right, invading the corner. And then this formation would kind of cancel out any central power that White would get from that invasion. Okay, so now white plays the extension here, which kind of is the boxy direction of his enclosure. Now it's a two-space extension, so it's the right width. Um, if white were to play too close to black, he could be worried about this type of invasion. So the two-space extension is very comfortable. So now we get to where Black made a mistake. Um, kind of looking around the board, think about where you'd play. I kind of wrote some of the options. You would think that um, you might want to play on the bottom side because if White is allowed to play again on the bottom, White could get you know a, a double wing position along his enclosure. So some players think, oh, I don't want my opponent to get a double wing, so would play along the bottom. It's Black's move, so Black would maybe play here to prevent a double wing. Black might try to seize the moment, take the corner enclosure. I know a lot of players who would just immediately jump in the corner. You could also play this move. And now you could also answer White's move with a jump of your own. So take a few minutes, think about what you'd do. Or rather, a few seconds. Now, in the game, Black played here, thinking, I don't want White to have the double wing. Also, this is smart because it starts to open up invasions into the corner territory. However, in this move, the lower side, we have all third line stones. The M3 stone, the O3 stone, the solid F3, C3 group. So when we have all third line stones, even though this does prevent the double wing, it really is just creating low flat territory and also preventing somewhat low flat territory. White took advantage and played the right move by playing a shoulder hit here. And you can see that there's no real way for black to resist. And so when black does this, it feels like black's territory has been pushed down. and White made an easy time of reducing that central territory. Another way white could have done it, there is an attachment here. And then white can kind of move out with the shoulder hit as well. So black's move here at M3 was a mistake. Obviously, knowing that the shoulder hit is the punishment, this jump here at P10 is the correct move. It makes a very nice boxy shape, creates a really large framework which White now has a hard time just going about his business. If White goes about his business here, one feels like White's development isn't quite as big as Black's development. So White would have to invade immediately in some sort of way. And it's hard exactly to pick the right point. Um, there's a number of probing moves we can try. We can try 
moves around A, there's probing moves around B, attachment at C. Um, normally you make a probe move against this corner enclosure. You don't expect to invade the corner enclosure, just create some sort of trouble. And then move on from there, where now you could maybe make a, a high reduction move Now, if white does this, he's hoping to jump somewhere in to the top side or maybe continue jumping down deep into the right side. He's leaving that R17 stone there in case it has some potential to be drawn out later. This would be the best way to start reducing this, but in any way, it feels like black has a good lead in this game and black is still looking at a good time to invade the 3-3 three, three point and wrestle away some of white's territory so this is a key moment in the opening where black made a mistake and kind of lost his chance to solidify the opening all right that's it for this lecture i'll be posting another one with the other game that i have um, so thanks for watching